So I just came here from market training, farmers market training, and my, my brain is you know, slowly shifting back over here. But that is a part of my story. Um, I belong to the Alvarado Park Neighborhood Association. I'm the president of that and have been for a couple of years. And um, I work with the Mile High Neighborhood Association that used to be Fair Heights, the Mark Twain Neighborhood Association, and the Fair West Neighborhood Association. Our common denominator is the stretch of San Pedro that it runs from Central to, um, to the freeway. It's pretty dilapidated. Um, this all started out when Mile High, which it was a real, is a real dynamo neighborhood association, decided that they wanted to start this new economic development, improving the neighborhood through increasing the um, uh, walkability, the biking, the, um, uh, the economic situation on San Pedro. And they started organizing things. And they went to the, to the city councilor and they said, look, we really need better lighting. We need better lighting for, for uh, pedestrians as well as for individuals. And by the way, we need to narrow San Pedro at, in that stretch so that people slow down and so we can have bike lanes and, and all of that. And then they started going, oh, hey, anybody want to help? And slowly, the rest of us started coming in on, the, on this project. And we worked with our city councilor. We worked with um, all kinds of people to get those things accomplished. And we got them done. Another thing that they said is, you know, we have problems, but what kind of assets do we have? What would be fun for people to participate in? Because, yes, people do participate and come together in, I keep having to pay attention to that thing, um, pay attention to uh, crime and hard things and things that break our heart, but people stay together when they have fun together. So out of that, we, we put together the farmer's market, and that would be the Mile High District my, uh, Farmer's Market, or San Pedro Farmer's Market. And that's something that happens every Sunday. There are food trucks, we have music, we have crafts, we have local food. We have EBT, which some of us will remember as uh, food stamps, and we have the Double Up program. So we're serving a wide range of people. They're coming to the park, they're becoming aware of the park, and when you have more people using the park, you have a lower crime rate. So it was a fun thing that helped reduce the amount of crime in our neighborhood. And we are, it's slow, it's slow, but it's coming down. So we have these kinds of successes with working with each other and supporting each other in the projects that we wanted to do. Mark Twain then said, you know, we got this program for our, our elementary school and it's where they take all kinds of subjects, like math, science, technology, engineering, art, and architecture. They meet with the kids um, every other week, and the kids do an architecture project. Would you like to help? All four neighborhoods said, yep. We will apply to the county for a grant, one of their neighborhood grants, to support that program so that our kids are doing better, and they also have a stronger connection to the neighborhood in which they live, because their projects always revolve around that. We got it. There was, it was like a no-brainer. We got that money, and why did we get that money? Well, not a lot of people applied, I will be honest about that, but four neighborhoods came together and said, we want this, and it happened. Several neighborhoods came together and said, we do not want liquor sales at um, Lomas, uh, is it Lomas? Lomas and Washington. We don't want that. Took a long time to fight that down, but that went down. Because we gathered together and combined our political power, which is really neighborhood power, and said, Ixnay, no, we don't want that. When, back in the day, when we first started working with neighborhoods, we talked to Mile High about Alvarado Park joining Mile High. And the reason for that was that we had um, 
we didn't have a lot of resources. We didn't have a lot of members. We uh, felt like maybe if we had more houses, we'd have more uh, voice in our political system. And what we found out was, no, we would have been reducing our voice because it wasn't the number of households that mattered. It wasn't the number of residents that mattered. It was the number of homeowners, and uh, not homeowners, neighborhood association that wanted a project done. So if we had joined, there would have been, I don't know, I'm gonna pull this out of the air, 1,500 homes. We would have had less clout than having two neighborhood associations. One of the things then, sort of coming up out of all of this, was that we brought together the presidents and vice presidents of the four neighborhood associations and said, what are our common assets? What are our common problems? What do we want to answer? We held a meeting last May where we talked about that. We didn't just arrive and say, oh, crime is it, that's all. We said, what are our problems? And we had a discussion about what are our problems and we processed all of that. Um, and we came up with some answers. ONC helped us put that together and they provided dynamite cookies, let me tell you. <laughs> they also brought to that people who were uh, experts in the field, which we could not have gotten ourselves. I could have called planning and said, oh, planning, I want someone, and they would have gone, oh, yeah. Neighbor, the Office of Neighborhood Coordination said, you will be there, and they said, okay. So it's real, it's like, use the resources available to you. Our second meeting was on um, crime, and we talked about what are the different, it was educational, it's a workshop kind of setting for all of the board members. And we talked about what resources are available to us through the city. And then we take that home and we present that to our boards and we come up with our own plans about what we can do. There's also a report that's available that um, brought all of that information together that we put together at that um, event. In May, we'll have another one where we'll talk about economic development. And the first step for that is saying, what are our assets? Where are our problem properties? Do we have historic properties? What do we care about? What is the nature of our, our strip? You know, what have we got that's good stuff? And that discussion was held by people from planning who came out and said, oh, and by the way, did you know that you have? And we're like, ah, oh, no, we didn't know. ONC got us a printout of every business along that corridor. Weren't there a few surprises in that? And we got maps. And so now we can, we're starting to figure out what our neighborhoods look like. And I think from um, our <clears throat> experience, we want to say these things, strength lies in numbers, all right? So find the numbers who have an interest in the same things that you're interested in and work with them. They can be next door, they can be down the block, but you need to have a common concern or a common asset that you're working on. Expect it to take at least three times longer than you anticipated. Expect that it probably will cost more than you anticipated and you have to have fallback plans. Nurture those who support you. If you've got someone in your neighborhood who is just goes and does stuff, make sure you take care of that person. If you have a, a, an agency or a counselor or a department who provides you with stuff, make sure you give back to them too. Support them too. Ask, what can I do for you? Because in building those kinds of relationships, it builds strength among people working on a particular issue and you're more willing to help each other out and get things done than if you don't say thank you and you don't do. And I have 30 seconds and I'm out of breath, so I'll leave you all now. <laughs>